Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're looking at The Omnivore's Dilemma by Michael Pollan. Michael Pollan is a journalist and a professor of science and environmental journalism at Harvard University. And I think that shows Pollan is an exceptionally competent journalistic writer, in my opinion. His specialty seems to be food. I also reviewed his book, The Botany of Desire, and The Omnivore's Dilemma is similar to that one in style. I also read This Is Your Mind on Plants by Michael Pollan, but that was before I started reviewing books, so uh, if I decide to review, review that book, I'll read it again first. And then there's How to Change Your Mind, which I've not yet read, but I really like Michael Pollan's book covers. What do you guys think of these? All of Michael Pollan's books that I've read are like a collection of three or four episodes put into one book. I find this to be a very effective approach to journalistic writing because we know what subjects he'll be speaking on specifically, and then we get this cool effect where we're, we're able to kind of put them all together at the end, resulting in a strong finish. And <laughs> Pollan's pretty good at this, he, uh, particularly in The Omnivore's Dilemma. We see recurring themes show up through the different sections, and Pollan gives the reader these pieces of information which are designed to get us to comparing uh, that information and how it's meaningful in each separate context and how they compare with each other. I don't know if you can hear my cat meowing, but that's really funny. It's a very subtle form of persuasive writing. I wouldn't classify this book as persuasive writing, but and it isn't an expose either, but it does have a little bit of that in there and it'll have this effect for getting you to think because the implications of all the things he talks about are very meaningful. So let's get into what the book is actually about. We have so many choices when it comes to what we eat, and most of us know very little about where our food actually comes from. The Omnivore's Dilemma is a journalist exploration of this topic. It's split into three major sections, industrial corn, pastoral grass, and the forest. For each of these sections, Pollen uses the concept of a meal as a device for inquiry, and I find that the topic of food is pretty good for holding my attention. Food is like the great unifier, and I think that fact probably has a little bit to do with Pollen's success. For industrial corn, we learn about the history of corn and its rise as an agricultural commodity, and just how ubiquitous it is. I didn't realize, but corn plays such a major role in so much of how we operate, and not just eating the stuff, but also making animal feed or producing ethanol, to name a couple. I learned that a big reason that corn-derived ethanol is added to gasoline is because we produce so much corn that we need to find more ways of using it. And it's crazy because the economics surrounding corn production entail that we produce more than we need. So we had to find more ways we can use it. When it comes to animal feed, corn is not something that cows evolved to eat. And this causes problems. It's done to because it allows us to fatten up the cows fast and cheap. And that, it's that interplay between economics and nature that I know we've all encountered before. And it tends to cause problems. And this is the main point of the second section in the book, Pastoral Grass. In contrast to industrial corn, we're shown a completely different way of farming, which is based on nature and how the animals naturally behave, meaning not feeding animals things that they never evolved to eat, for one. And it's amazing how much addressing this one point cuts down on all the other uh, complications that are associated with industrial egg. The idea is to keep the animals operating in a way that they do in nature, and there are major benefits to doing things this way, but it usually comes at the expense of productivity. With industrial egg, it's all about bushels per acre. How much product can we squeeze out of so much land? With pastoral grass, that's still important, but it's not the driving factor. This section uh, focuses on an idea that is now becoming, from what I can tell, the future of farming, if we want to be sust sustainable anyway. And the idea is called agroecology, though the book never uses that term. Google defines agroecology as follows. The, app the application of ecological principles to agriculture systems and practices or the branch of science concerned with this. Quote, 
New farming methods such as agroecology increase yields while reducing environmental impacts, end quote. And agroecology is what made me want to re-listen to the Omnivore's Dilemma audiobook. I got this book in the mail, and I read the first chapter, and it very much reminded me of the Omnivore's Dilemma. And the Omnivore's Dilemma came out like a, like a decade or so ago, maybe even more. But uh, So I thought I'd revisit that book, and I'm glad I did, because the Omnivore's Dilemma was better the second time around for me. But I think this idea of agroecology is something that is only recently coming into the mainstream and probably out of necessity because it's all about sustainability. In growing animals and food, we have waste products, but in nature, there are no waste products. Every product is used to feed some other organism, and <laughs> that's the idea explored in the second section of the book. By taking advantage of all these different techniques, we see many of the problems that plague industrial egg and make life horrible for the animals significantly alleviated by utilizing nutrient and organic matter cycles and investing in their own soil. These farmers are able to achieve much more sustainable pro productions. Again, though, there are costs in dollars and productivity, but again, a lot of this is coming from necessity. If we take a look at the trophic systems in nature, you have the producers, the plants that use photosynthesis to build complex carbohydrates, and then we have animals that eat them, and the animals that eat the animals that eat them. But for every level up the trophic system that we move, there's a loss of 90% efficiency. It's lost as heat, and this means that if it takes, say, 1,000 units of energy to produce a full-grown cow, then it would take 100 units to produce the same amount of calories in vegetable food that you could either feed to a cow or eat yourself. Of course, it's much more efficient if you eat it yourself. And this is one of the arguments for vegetarianism. I'm not a vegetarian myself, but man, when you look at stuff like this, it really gets you thinking. And I think that was uh, Pollen's whole idea. But I can see this fact playing a more central role in food production as time goes on. The final section of this book is about Pollen producing his own meal with nothing but ingredients that he either grew or shot or forged himself. And I really got to give it to the guy. He had never fired a weapon before writing this book. And he went and took the mandatory hunter safety class and all that stuff. And everything he harvested was done with the assistance of experts. Where I live, we have morels growing in the mountains, and people like to go up and forage for them in the spring. Put it in the comments if you've ever gone foraging for wild mushrooms. So This is a book where everything comes together in the end, and a very satisfying conclusion. This is your mind on plants. is the same idea. The book is about three different plants, and Pollen is supposed to write about an experience with each one of them, just like he does for Omnivore's Dilemma. But he kind of cheats with one of the plants in that book. Maybe if I review that someday, we'll talk about that. But Omnivore's Dilemma had a better ending. Another thing I'd like to add is, if you're a foodie, this book is going to have some bonus appeal for you. The way Pollen talks about preparing his meals, this guy has a far more sophisticated culinary sensibilities than I do. And let me tell you, this book is going to make you hungry. So keep that in mind if you decide you'd like to read it. I'll close by saying this, I enjoyed this book, but I watch other people's book reviews and I really think that this is a book that other people would like even more than I did. It really feels like something that would just appeal to everyone and Pollen's writing is just very good and the dude really knows his stuff. With his credentials, he's the guy to write something like this. I think if you read this book, you'll be grateful for his work. All of the books I read by him were pretty good. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to learn more about where your food comes from, which seems pretty important, or you're ready to challenge your comfort level with your dietary habits, definitely check out The Omnivore's Dilemma by Michael Pollan.